Hello and welcome to this overview of my YouTube page for the Immersive World's Handbook. My name is Scott Lucas. I'm a cultural anthropologist by training, and I'm also the author of the Immersive World's Handbook, Designing Theme Parks and Consumer Spaces, which was a practical guide I wrote a number of years back to focus on the design and uh, various approaches that one might take in looking at many of the spaces that I consider on my YouTube page. I'm a cultural anthropologist by training, and uh, my dissertation focused on work in a uh, at Six Flags Park called Astroworld in Houston, Texas, which is unfortunately no longer there. Um, part of that work actually became the impetus for a chapter in this book called The Theme Space. This was an edited collection in my first book that I published, along with a number of other authors from around the world who were interested in some of the same issues, but in different spaces, different theme parks, different types of uh, venues. And so this is a, um, my first collection focusing on some of the spaces I talk about on my YouTube page. Uh, following that, I had the opportunity to uh, write the monograph Theme Park, which is a historical, cultural, political overview of the theme park form. Um, eventually that was uh, translated actually into Arabic, my first uh, translation there. Um, and then after um, these books, uh, again I wrote the Immersive Worlds Handbook, which was the practical guidebook. And a number of the issues I'll talk about in, this, uh, in these videos came directly out of this book as forms of inspiration. And then finally, I uh, produced another edited collection, A Reader in Themed and Immersive Spaces. And a curious thing, when I was going through the book, um, near the back in one of my chapters, I talk about um, researching themed and immersive spaces. And I actually talk about my um, uh, web page and actually my YouTube page as a form of research. And so it occurred to me when I was going through this that I actually don't have a video introduction. So if you, the viewer, come to my YouTube page, you might wonder, what is this page all about and how can I understand it? So that's actually the purpose of my video today is to talk about the organization of the page, um, the videos you can find, my approaches, and so forth. So um, that was really uh, my introduction is inspired from this chapter in here focusing on the research that I do. Um, a couple of other sources. I also do writing in um, practical senses that mimic some of the stuff I do in the Immersive Worlds Handbook. So, for example, I do work for attractions management. This particular um, issue, I wrote an article on keeping it real, which was focused on the idea of authenticity in themed and immersive spaces. And then um, the same group of attractions management uh, editors do this CLAD book which is a great guidebook that focuses on a number of different um, areas of theme and immersive spaces. And so on this one, appropriately enough, I wrote an article called Why Immersion Matters. Now, I mentioned some of this work because there's a bit of paralleling between some of this practical work that I did in the Immersive Worlds Handbook and some of the work I do for attractions management. Practical in the sense that I feel like you can directly understand what's happening in these spaces um, you can look at them in some philosophical senses, but not get bogged down by some of the jargon or issues that typically come up when you're looking at um, a more academic approach. So over the last few years, I've been trying more extensively to focus on the more practical side of things. And that's indeed what you'll see um, on my YouTube page looking at the various videos that I, I offer for you. Now, what I want to do now is actually go through the organization of the page, talk about the... Um, the different types of playlists you'll find, and then go through what I'll call a representative sample for each playlist. Each of the playlists is part of um, you know, various um, section or chapter headings, and each playlist can contain upwards of um, you know, from two to 70 different videos. You'll also note as you go through my YouTube page, there may be overlap. So if you look at um, a video in one section or one playlist, you might find that same video in another one. There's a bit of redundancy um, for a practical reason that sometimes videos will fit into more than one um, type of playlist or section heading. Another thing I should say about this, and there's a video I did recently called Responding to My Critics, but sometimes people will come to my videos and think that they're walkthroughs of spaces. Indeed, in some cases, I will do an entire walkthrough, but in addition to walking through the space, I'll give you some of my commentary. Again, the cultural anthropologist in me, the former theme park trainer, the amusement industry consultant in me, all want to focus on 
looking at the issues, looking at what I see, looking at what I interpret. Some people don't necessarily like this, so uh, if that's the case, you could find other videos out there. There are other videos of some of the same spaces I consider that are complete walkthroughs. So it just depends on what you're looking for. So um, let me now focus on what the organization of the YouTube page is like so that you as the viewer get a better sense of what to expect when you start watching some of these videos. Okay, so the first um, section heading here is called spatial types. These are quite simply the types of spaces you might expect um, as the form of organization for each of the playlists. So for example, the first one here is called airports. So I'm taking you through different air airport spaces that have some sense of theming or immersion um, behind them. Uh, my example of a foundational video in that regard is Changi Airport in Singapore. If you haven't been to this airport, hopefully you'll be encouraged to go there. It's one of the very few airports I'll, I'll say to you, I wish I could get a very long layover. A lot of American airports aren't like this because frankly they're, they're fairly boring. Changi Airport in Singapore is everything um, opposite of the typical airport. It's immersive, it's themed, you will find multiple um, gardens, um, entertainment centers, it's absolutely not to be missed. And I won't say much about it. Check out the video if you want to see what it's like. The second spatial type I'm focusing on here, and again, these are all playlists under spatial types, is called bars. And so bars, will you'll find multiple videos from um, various immersive bars from around the world. My um, representational one is called Die Tagung, which in German is the party, as in political party. And this specific video focuses on my impressions of a, uh, a, a rather kitschy, fun, East German communist-themed bar um, that I happened to visit when I was in Berlin. Uh, so check that one out if you're interested in themed bars. The next is, is branded space. These are spaces that have a brand as part of their theming or really the foundation of the entirety of their theming. A great representative space in this regard is BMW Welt, uh, BMW World in Munich, Germany, a space that goes above and beyond your expectations maybe of what you would expect to see in a BMW themed space. Believe me, it's not just about the cars, so if you're interested, uh, check this video out and certainly I'll say with all these, visit the space if you happen to be in that part of the world, in this case in Munich, Germany. Next we have casinos, um, and when I think of uh, you know, themed casinos, I think of the Las Vegas Strip. And so if you go to this playlist, you will find probably um, a large number of the videos focused on Vegas casinos um, because they happen to be my favorite, and I, I tend to think they're the ones that are absolutely over the top in terms of their theming. Although if you uh, go to uh, you know other parts of the world, uh, parts of China, uh, the United Arab Emirates, you're going to see more and more, I think, spectacular spaces that take on uh, some of the themed casinos that you even see on the Las Vegas Strip. The next spatial type is a cruise ship, and specifically here I will have a, a series of videos that focus on some of the thematic and immersive potentials that you'll get as a guest while going inside um, a cruise ship space. The next spatial type is food. And this could include certainly a restaurant, but it doesn't have to be a restaurant. My example here is the Malaysian Food Street, which is a wonderful themed uh, food court, but nothing like the typical food courts that we see, say, in the States or in Europe. And this you'll find in the Sentosa Resort uh, in Singapore that's part of that massive complex that includes Universal Studios, uh, Singapore, and many other exciting themed and immersive spaces. Uh, the next spatial type is the hotel. So this will be a themed hotel space that typically is above and beyond your typical space, typical hotel space. My example here is Legoland in Orlando, Florida. If you get a chance to go there, check it out because it's one of the best examples of what you can do in terms of taking a brand and embellishing it throughout a space, in this case um, a resort space that is, uh, includes a theme park but I'm focusing primarily on the hotel version of Legoland. Uh, next we get memorials. Memorial spaces are ones that are typically a bit more didactic and pedagogical in nature and also more sobering in nature in terms of what they're describing to you or having you experience as a guest. My example of this would be the Manzanar space which is down towards Southern California. Um, if you're going uh, towards uh, Riverside just before there you'll see Manzanar which is an actual internment camp space that was used to house the um, uh, prisoners of this space during World War II, the Japanese prisoners, 
and um, Manzanar is an attempt, I think, to um, pay tribute to the space and to focus on the um, incredible um, tragedy that Manzanar represented along with the other internment or concentration camps, as people often call them. Um, next, we have multi-use space. An example of this, I think, would be City Center, the new abstract representational spaces um, on the Las Vegas Strip. So check out my videos of City Center, among many other multi-use space videos. And again, these would be videos that um, focus on spaces that include multiple forms of entertainment, lodging, theming, immersion, services, retail spaces, and so forth. And we call these multi-use spaces. Next we have museums, and I think a great example of a museum space to look at is the Mob Museum in Las Vegas, which is uh, right in that section north of the Strip, Fremont Street area. A really wonderful museum that's taken, I think, a lot of um, negative criticism, unfortunately, because people think that the museum is a little kitschy. I don't think it's kitschy at all, I think it's experiential, and sometimes experiential spaces are often assumed to be over the top or kitschy and so forth, but not really the case here in terms of the Mod Museum. Next we have retail space, and a great example of a retail space to check out, which is part of the, the new uh, Link um, Casino and Shopping Mall right above the, the giant Ferris wheel there in the Las Vegas Strip, is the Polaroid Photo Bar. Now if you check out my videos since I visited the space, it's changed dramatically, so you'll, I think, see something entirely different. But it's a great representational space of retail because it does so much more than we might expect in terms of taking the Polaroid concept and making it modern for the guests in this era um, of social media and sharing images on the computer on um, social media spaces and so forth. So check that one out. The next uh, spatial type is rides. And rides will include many different types of rides. In this case, you might focus on my dark ride tribute at Knott's Berry Farm in Southern California, just next to the uh, famous Disneyland theme park as well. Uh, the next spatial type is my playlist on shopping malls. And my example here is experiential malls in Singapore. And this is actually a series in which I focus on, on a number of themed and immersive malls in Singapore. If you visit Singapore, it's the one city maybe to say, go check out the malls. They're nothing like malls you see anywhere else in the world, and I won't say much more about that. Check out my video called Experiential Malls in Singapore to see what I'm talking about. The next spatial type we're familiar with is theme parks, and my example here is Disney's Cars Land, which was that revitalized um, part of the Disneyland uh, theming area or theme park, one specific theme land, and they redid it, and it's quite wonderful if, if you get a chance to visit Check out some of my video on Disney's Car Land if you get the chance. And the last spatial type to focus on is called Cities. And these are uh, city spaces themselves that take on a theme or immersive dimension. My example is Hallstatt in Austria, which is very near Badosse. This is the area where they film The Sound of Music. And uh, this is a city that is famous around the world. Visitors love it because it is so quaint and wonderful in terms of some of the experiences that you'll see there. So this wraps up the uh, spatial type section, and uh, I hope you get a chance to look at some of these and to see that there are so many wonderful themed and immersive spaces to visit around the world, and maybe vicariously a bit, you can check out some of these here on my YouTube page for the Immersive Worlds Handbook. Okay, and the next section to go over here on my YouTube page is called Spatial Issues. You'll recall the first um, section heading was Spatial Types, which gets into the function of the space. This next area is more pragmatic and focusing on a, a particular analytic issue related to space itself. For example, the first one here is a playlist on architecture and design. So if I visit a space and I think there's something unique going on with architecture and design, I will try to um, connect it to that playlist. An example of that is right here. Monumental Space is the name of the video, and the location is Tropical Islands. This is a massive complex in Germany, just outside of Berlin, about a 45 minute, 50 minute uh, train ride, uh, well worth your visit. It's a former Zeppelin hangar that they've turned into a dramatic interior space that has theming, uh, many different theme lands, hotel rooms, restaurants, shops, and above all, an actual beach with real sand and real water. So check out this video, and if you're there, check out Tropical Islands. Uh, the next spatial issue is called Story and Narrative, and this would be any space that has 
something interesting going on in terms of the narrative or story being told to the guest. An example of this is the video on theming and the experience economy, and this specifically focuses on the Cerritos Millennium Library, a wonderful library in Southern California that was based in part on Piney Gilmore's monumental book, The Experience Economy. It's a library to check out because it's not just about books or card catalogs or internet terminals, it's about the experience itself. So check it out if you, if you get to go there or check out my video on it. The next spatial issue is called theming. And so these will be theme spaces of various sorts, not just your typical ones. So certainly you might think, yeah, you can go to the Paris Las Vegas and check out a space or place-based theme space. But what about um, time itself? I take you on this video to Coffee Men, which is a uh, cafe chain in Singapore. And it's very unique, it's, it's themed a long time. So you walk into the cafe, you pay for the time that you want to spend there, you can drink, drink a cup of coffee, but also you can play video games, you could shoot pool, and uh, you can even look at, at the clocks on the wall. So time itself is the theme at this particular cafe in Singapore. Uh, next we have art and aesthetics as a theme. In my example space is the Hard Rock Hotel in uh, Lake Tahoe, California. And this is a hotel that was rethemed from a previous uh, version called the Horizon, which really wasn't a themed casino. And I have this in my art and aesthetics playlist because if you go to any hard rock space, whether the casino in Las Vegas or the, the, the hotels or any other spaces around the world really, you see often that there's an aesthetic level that they take music, memorabilia, and music performance too. So I have it on this playlist because I think there's something unique going on here at the Hard Rock Hotel in Lake Tahoe, California. Next is a playlist on history. These will be spaces that focus on the past, present, or future in terms of time. And my example video for this is Civil War reenactment in Virginia City, Nevada. An interesting day I spent looking at Civil War reenactors and how they tried to approach the history of the Civil War in some authentic ways. Next we have nature. So these will be spaces that focus on nature or some play with nature. Um, in this example, I have Gardens by the Bay in Singapore. And this is an example of using nature and actual trees and actual lush gardens combined with what's called super trees, which are, are these amazing aesthetic performative forms that are some of the best examples of thematic technology I think I've ever seen. So check that video out for sure. Uh, next is what I call spectacle. And so a spectacle space will be one that has some level of experience to it that is grand in nature, that is typically visually or using the other senses dramatic to the guests such that it beckons you from um, a great distance. The example of this would be any number of um, theme casinos or theme spaces on the Las Vegas Strip. When I think of the Las Vegas Strip, I tend to think of grand spectacle as part of the entertainment of what you're getting as a guest. Uh, next we have sensory space. Sensory space would be one that uses one or many more of the senses to a dr dramatic degree to connect to the guests. An example of this is the Curryverse Museum in Berlin. Not unlike the Mob Museum in that it often gets a lot of negative commentary on social media sites, which I think is unfortunate. Um, it's much more than a tourist trap. It's a very innovative museum that you should check out if you're in Berlin. Uh, and the reason I have it on this playlist is because they use just about every one of the senses to get you to connect to the story of Curryverse, which is a very famous um, uh, hot dog sausage that has a curry ketchup that you can find in many parts of Berlin and also in parts of Germany. The next playlist is technology. And here I, I use uh, the video I have on room interactivity at the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas. So check out this video to see how uh, innovative technology is used as part of the room design at the Cosmopolitan. And then the last spatial issue I'm looking at is called Key Issues in Space. And my video, um, foundational video for this is placemaking at the Victoria Gardens Mall, which is a, a very innovative mall that you'll find uh, just near Riverside, California in Southern California. So that sums up the spatial issues which get into some of the most unique architectural and design issues that you might see here on my YouTube page. Okay, and the next um, section I'm looking at, I call this conceptual issues. This is getting us into more abstract terrain. Uh, the spatial types are quite focused on functional, playlists by the type of space, 
spatial issues, getting a little more detailed into analysis of the spaces themselves. Conceptual issues may take us even beyond the spaces, if that makes sense. For example, my first playlist is similarly called Conceptual Space, and I take you to the, uh, uh, in this example here, the pop-up concept store at the Bikini Berlin in, in Berlin, Germany. So this is a mall that has um, very interesting aesthetics to it, and then in the middle of the mall, you'll get these pop-up stores that people can rent for, for a while. You could be an artist or some uh, person creating an innovative product, and then you can show your product in a mall that maybe is more typically reserved to some of the big brands or big names. You'll find those on the exterior of the mall, but on the interior, you'll find these pop-up uh, cubes that are quite unique. And I use this as an example to say that a lot of the spaces we experience it in today's day and age are much more than just being themed or immersive or experiential. They sometimes want to get us to think about something beyond the space itself. It takes us almost to, um, what would I say, a meta level in terms of the space. That leads into my next playlist called Existential Space. And an example here, video, is my trip to Ikea and in a video I call Agency and Space. And here I was trying to get you to think about the viewer so you're walking through and following the pathway through a typical IKEA store, how much agency do you actually have as a person visiting the store? And then when you buy all your products and you get those home and you look at those very um, 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 distinctive instruction manuals and you use your, your Allen wrenches and different tools that they provide to you to, to assemble this stuff, what kind of agency do you have as a consumer? So existential space, dealing with more philosophical issues in this playlist. Next, we have the guest point of view. So these will be videos that focus on how a guest experiences a particular space. And an example of this is um, an exhibit I visited in Rotterdam, a very, um, in the Netherlands, a very innovative um, space in terms of architecture, city in terms of architecture. And this focuses on civics in the city and an exhibition I visited uh, that gets into how uh, people conceive of space and how much role they have as being a guest or a user of that space in terms of making that space their own. Uh, the next conceptual issue is a playlist called Lifestyle. And uh, my example of this is uh, Cool Spaces, and I take you to the Enhau in Berlin, Germany. This is a very innovative themed hotel that uses music as its theming, uses coolness inside and outside of the rooms, in the lobby spaces. You can even rent um, or, or borrow uh, a Stratocaster and a mini amp and take it to your room and play power chords to your heart's content. So uh, all of these um, videos on this playlist will focus on lifestyle issues to some degree. Next we have politics and dark issues. In my example video is what I call dark topics. And this is the Data Air Museum in Berlin, Germany. This is a museum that focuses on the former uh, period of the Stasi and uh, East uh, Berlin and East Germany and focusing on uh, some of the very dark issues that are inherent in this very um, interesting time period, disturbing time period, and you'll see this in this experiential museum in Berlin, Germany. Next we have authenticity. How is authenticity a part of particular spaces or an issue of design or experience in those spaces? My example video here is what I call my favorite sign uh, at the Paris Las Vegas. This is the sign that you see when you walk into the front door and they make a bit of a joke about the space being very uneven um, because it's such a, an authentic recreation of a Parisian street. So I use this um, as a way of, of talking a bit about authenticity. And my next um, conceptual issue is called remaking. And these are all spaces that remake or reuse um, a previous version, as abstract as that sounds. My example of this is uh, my video on reuse at Tempelhofer Field in Berlin, Germany. So this is a former World War II airport that's maintained to some degree, but it's also been transformed. People go there today, um, ride their bikes, fly their kites, walk their dogs, and it's a great example, I think, of taking a space, maintaining it, including some of its dark and disturbing historical legacy, with National Socialism and the Nazis, but giving something new to it in terms of its new remade form. So check out that video in Berlin, Germany. And then the last conceptual issue here is called Religion and Theming. Quite obviously, this will be spaces that focus on, uh, these will be spaces that focus on religion and theming as part of their space. My example video of this is called Encountering the Ark, 
And this was my visit to the Ark Encounter in Williamstown, Kentucky, which is a very unique and controversial space that is a sister space of its more northern space called the Creation Museum by AIG or Answers in Genesis. So check out this video and many other new ones I'll be um, offering in the future that focus on religion and theming. So this sums up then the conceptual issues section for my YouTube page of the Immersive Worlds Handbook. Okay, my next uh, section heading for you to look at is called locations. I won't go through all these because it's pretty obvious. So you'll see Berlin, Las Vegas, Singapore, and many other spaces. Um, so these are, are particular spaces in the world, or in, in some cases, you know, corporations, Disney, that have their own dedicated playlist because I feel like there's a lot to gain from these locations. For example, um, Expo 2015, which is my last playlist, um, I think I have over 70 different videos and there were so many different pavilions to check out. So if you want to go straight to the space by geography or corporation, check out locations playlist here on my YouTube channel. Okay, and the next section heading is called research. Um, this is quite uh, clearly focused on my research in themed and immersive spaces. I have a number of videos where I talk about, for example, how I take field notes or the various cameras that I use when I'm trying to record these videos for you here on the YouTube page. Secondly, I include playlists on academic talks. So in a lot of cases, I will give a talk based on some of my um, academic research and then I'll, I'll make that as a video. If you're not interested in academic talks, you can avoid those, uh, like the plague if that's your thing, and check out some of my more, I don't wanna say more interesting, but my more experiential videos that actually deal with, with real spaces as, I'm visit, as I happen to be visiting them. Now secondly, you'll notice a, a section head called Creating the Book. And this is focused on the Immersive Worlds Handbook. When I was in the process of creating it, I do a video introduction for each chapter. And I also even have a video that focuses on my storyboards that I use to organize my different areas of the book. So if that interests you and you want to see how I created the book, um, check out those playlists that are under the heading called Creating the Book. Okay, and in addition to the spatial types, spatial issues, conceptual issues, locations, research, and creating the book section headings, and all those playlists, I should mention three new ones that are in the works as we speak here in 2017. The first of these is called Futures, and Futures will focus on some future-based issues of themed and immersive spaces, and I'll give you more of, of, of what that's like once I actually get around to, to making some of these videos. These are all in the planning stages. Secondly is what I call Archives. Um, these will be spaces that I try to some degree to recreate based on archival footage, based on postcards, based on information available to me. In some cases, I haven't actually visited these spaces, but I'll try to give you a sense of their immersive qualities, even based, or even though I haven't visited them, and based only on what I have at hand, which is often archival material. So that's the archives playlist. And last is what I call soundings. Um, part of my background actually is um, uh, being a musician and electronic composer, so I wanted to do a series of videos I thought would be kind of fun to focus on my interest in music, and I have to tell you right now, I'm not sure entirely how uh, I will connect uh, the immersive spaces to what I'm calling soundings or experiences of music and musical experiences or atmospheric sound experiences in spaces, but I'll be working that on in the future so you can kind of check out um, these three new playlists as I develop more videos for them. And I should say this as well, um, as I create more videos, as I visit more spaces, I may delete playlists, I will add to playlists, so it's always important to uh, come back and, and check things out. If you're a subscriber to my YouTube page, which I, I recommend that you, you do if you can, um, you'll actually see that uh, uh, when there's a new video, you'll get a notification saying there's a new video for you to check out. So that's a, a great opportunity there. If you want to be, become a subscriber to the uh, YouTube page for the Immersive Worlds Handbook, you can do that and then you can uh, be aware of the newest videos when I have the time to put them up on my YouTube page. I should also say that this is entirely a volunteer effort doing these YouTube videos and uh, you know I don't um, have any ads because I want to make the experience as authentic as possible to you, the viewer. The other thing I should say is that I hope you'll use the opportunity to give me some feedback, hopefully nice feedback if you can, uh, you know, and offer some comments in the comment sections on my videos. Um, it could be everything from 
hey, check this other video out, it might be interesting to you, or a memory that you might post that you're very fond of when you visited one of the spaces that I've also visited um, in one of these videos on my YouTube, uh, YouTube page. So um, that's it, that's the introduction to my uh, YouTube page for the Immersive Worlds Handbook. I love the opportunity to bring these videos to you, the viewer. Um, I hope you'll have the opportunity to watch some of them, to give me some feedback, and by all means, um, if you get a chance to visit these spaces on your own, do it because these are some of the, the greatest spaces that I try to seek out and offer these immersive videos to you uh, as a viewer. So thanks for listening and I hope you come back for all the various video features here on the Immersive Worlds uh, YouTube channel.